In today's video, we are going to be talking about one of the most requested topics on this channel, and that is how to set up push notifications. So you all probably know what push notifications are. Pretty much any app that, you know, does something useful, regardless of what kind of niche it is, whether this is a car sharing app or a delivery app or something else, chances are they're all using push notifications. Okay. And so in this video, I'm going to show you exactly how you can set up completely working push notifications we're going to be covering firebase setup and we're also going to be covering superbase setup and a little bit later in the video i'm going to be showing you a fully working uh, proof of concept app that is able to send different push notifications to different users so definitely stay tuned for that now, before we get started, as always, all the apps and all the resources that I talk about on this channel are going to be available to view and or clone from my Patreon page. And you can learn more about our amazing, rapidly growing Patreon community via the link in the description below the video. Now, a good place to get started with uh, when it comes to push notifications is by heading to Flutterflow Docs and searching for push notifications and you're going to find this page here you can read it and this is going to give you a very very good start it's going to allow you to get started but still there's so many other things that you need to kind of take care of to make sure that everything works together and before we kind of jump into the uh the ad building and everything else i want to show you a diagram okay uh this is an overview high level overview of how push notifications work, especially in the context of Flutterflow, but this is general, right? This is how they work in a general sense. Now, it's very, very important for you guys to understand this diagram because this is essentially half the battle. If you understand how it works here, you know, you're going to be in a good place. Now, there are two important flows that you guys need to internalize. The first flow is this initial flow. The second flow is the actual send notification flow okay now this first flow happens when the user loads the app now because we have to be using authentication with push notification when the user loads the app if they are not already authenticated they will need to do so and when they log in the next thing that's going to happen is your flutterflow app is going to connect to fcm fcm stands for firebase cloud messaging and it's going to obtain something called a token. Now, this token here essentially links your app to the uh, the entire platform, the entire FCM platform. And so with this token, Firebase will know exactly what your app is. It will know exactly who to send those messages to. Okay. Now, last but not least, once we have this token, we associate it with a user, with a currently logged in user. And this part is done for you by Flutterflow, right? So Flutterflow installs these functions and all of this is done for you, right? So no, there's nothing that you need to do here. Now, why is this done here? The reason this is done is because typically you're not going to be sending notifications via the token. You're going to be sending notifications to a specific user. Of course, you can send notifications via a token, but it's not really practical, right? Typically, you're going to select a user and you're going to be sending a notification to that user. But because we have this mapping here, anytime you're sending a push notification to a specific user, the system will automatically look up the specific token and then send that push notification via that token to that token essentially and that's going to reach this specific app that you're trying to target now this here is the first flow that happens when the user first logs in next we have another a little bit more complex flow and this is a flow that happens whenever you are sending push notifications right so this flow is going to happen just once right so you're going to log in and you know the user is going to stay logged in until they log out or a certain timeout passes, right? Whereas this flow, well, you're gonna be constantly sending push notifications or your app is gonna be constantly sending push notifications to different users. And so what happens here is, the first thing that you're gonna do is you're gonna set up an action and this is gonna be a built-in Flutterflow action called push notification, right? And there you can specify things like title, body, uh, the user, et cetera, et cetera. Essentially, 
all the fields that you need to send a push notification to a specific user, to a specific app. Once you do that, this information goes into a Firebase collection. And as soon as there's some new data in that specific Firebase collection, this cloud function triggers. So remember, this, these two are cloud functions that are provided to you by Flutterflow, okay? So this cloud function gets triggered, and once this cloud function gets triggered, it sends the notification to the specific app. Now, we're not done yet, because the next thing that you need to do, you need to actually react to this notification, okay? Once you get the notification, the app knows it, but it needs to do something. Maybe display a dialog box, tell the user there's a notification, etc., etc. And this part here is not provided by Flutterflow. So Flutterflow does not provide this part. And so out of the box, the way this works is that if the user is using the app, the user is not going to know that there is a notification. But if the user is not using the app, then the system will, you know, have the notification in the notification um, subsystem, right? So if you, you know, pull up from the top of the screen, you're going to be seeing your notifications on an Android device or an iOS device, and you're going to be seeing those notifications. But those notifications out of the box will only be viewable if the app is not running, okay? And so this part here is something that you need to do yourself. Unfortunately, I already did this, and I'm going to be providing to you guys an app that already takes care of all this. So if you're a member of our amazing Patreon community, you'll be able to view and or clone this exact app that I'm about to show you that takes care of all of this for you. Okay, so this is super, super important. Okay, it's very, very important for you guys to kind of internalize this flow. Okay, because when you go out and start setting up your app, you need to understand exactly where all the pieces fit in, okay? So now that you've kind of seen the overview, you've seen the flow, let me show you a proof of concept app that I built where you're able to send different push notifications to different users, okay? So I have this app here running in an emulator. In fact, I have two versions of this app running in two different devices and that way we can send a push notification from one user to another okay so here i'm logged in as tom at tom.com this is just a regular uh firebase authentication account okay so i'm logged in as this person and you're seeing this token right because when you configure a uh, flutterflow for push notifications you're gonna get this token automatically after you log in okay and here you can select the user okay so i have three users these are all the users in my uh firebase uh, users collection and i can select the user and i can send them a push notification now in this instance here i'm logged in as a different person i'm logged in as rob at rob.com and as you can see we have this token as well this is very very important okay we have this token as well and here I can send a push notification to someone as well. So I can send it to Tom here, or I can send it to myself if I want. And so let's go ahead and try sending a couple of push notifications and see if it works, okay? So as an example, I can send a push notification to myself. So I can say, I can just select Tom here and say, send notification. So it shows Tom at Tom.com. And now it's going to display the actual push notification. As you can see, it displays this little dialog box. Now, this dialog box here is another widget. It's a third-party widget that I installed, that I got to react to push notifications. This is not provided by Flutterflow. So with Flutterflow, what's gonna happen here is I close this app. You see this app is not running anymore, right? It's kind of in the background, you can say. But I can still send push notifications to it, right? So here I'm logged in as Rob, at, at rob.com. This is Tom at Tom.com. So I can send Tom a notification and it should get it. Okay. So as you can see, now there's a little notification here. So I can pull up here and I have a notification here. Okay. So I have three. In fact, I can clear them because I had some old ones and I can send another one. Okay. So I can send a fresh one here. Okay. So it says Tom at Tom.com. And now we have another notification, okay? And there's the notification. Now, 
HateSummitSum.com. So this is the default behavior. If you do not do anything, you're going to be seeing these notifications, but only if the app is not running. Okay. If the app is running, you need to do something extra. Okay. So now I can open my app and I can send notifications to this person, right? So I can say, well, I want to send it to Rob at Rob.com. And here I'm logged in as Rob, uh, as, as Rob right with an with an email rob at rob.com so i can send a notification here and now it says rob at rob.com and now i should be getting a notification here's a notification now one thing i want to point out is this widget here is really really cool let me show you this is a really really nice widget you can do a lot of really cool things so i can reply to a message here i can you know dismiss it i can do a redirect it's a really really it's a fully functioning widget that you can customize for all kinds of different scenarios. All right, so you saw me sending a notification from this app to here. And as a last example, I can also send it to myself. So let's say I send it here, rob at rob.com, and there is a notification here. So as you can see, it works really, really nice. And now let's jump into Flutterflow and let me show you exactly how it all works together. All right, so here I am inside of my Flutterflow app and the app that you see here is the exact app that I just showed you. I simply download this app by clicking here and clicking here and simply pulling all the code on my computer and then simply running it using the uh, simulators. I just have two simulators. They look different, but it's the exact same app logged in with different users. Okay so let's talk about this app here so how do you set up push notifications well the first thing that you need to do is you need to search for push notifications and you need to enable it here the next thing that you need to do is you need to deploy uh cloud functions okay and these are functions that run server side they run on google's platform right this is firebase google same thing they run on google cloud essentially and these functions are essentially these two here right this red and this red represents cloud functions right so this is the role that they uh this is what they do right they you know they do this thing here and then uh, when it comes to this flow they they you know actually send a notification right so cloud functions are very very important okay make sure you trigger that when you trigger it you're going to be you can go into your project setting right so you can simply go into firebase and you can click on functions here and you should be seeing these functions here so this send email is another function you can ignore it but you're going to be seeing three functions here you're going to be seeing this one this one and this one right this add fcm token is the part that adds the token and associates it with the user right so if we come over here this is this part here right that that function because the the cloud function is actually like there's a bunch of functions right that do different things one associates the token to the user and then another one actually sends the notifications in this flow here okay and so you're going to be seeing three functions okay and if it doesn't work the first time simply do it again and if you do something and it doesn't work and you see these functions here delete them first just come in here delete these functions and then retry from flutterflow and eventually if you have any issues i mean i got it i got it working on like the second try but I, i've heard some people having issues so you know you can delete them and retry them and it should eventually work okay so make sure you set this up and obviously you need to make sure that you have firebase setup right so if you come over here i have my firebase connected because cloud functions are part of firebase right so you need to make sure you have your firebase set up you need to make sure that you have authentication set up right so i have authentication here set up and the reason we need authentication because it's linking the token to a user okay you don't need i mean you don't need authentication in order to get push notifications to work right but that way it's going to be hard to figure out who is the person that's using the app who to send notifications to right i mean obviously i can i can run like five instances of my app remember all the tokens and then say well i want to send you know to this instance i want to send it to this instance but it's a lot easier to log in the user and map 
their user ID to a token. And that way I can just send to a user, then look up their token and send to their token. Okay. So yeah, that makes a lot of sense, right? It just, it would just be a mess to do it without authentication. All right. So that's the first thing here. You got to make sure that you have your cloud functions, Firebase, everything set up here. The next thing that you're going to be doing is you're going to be setting up the app. Okay. And so if you take a look at the send notification, well, I have uh, just two actions here, but this is the main one trigger push notification, right? And here you can kind of configure, you can say, well, uh, the recipients, right? Who we're going to be sending it to. I just have a single user and this needs a, um, this needs a doc reference. Okay. And then you can specify the title, the text, how are you, you know, you can specify the image, you can deliver with sound, you have a bunch of settings. Now, when this is triggered, what happens here is it essentially adds uh, a record into your collection, right? So when you set up your cloud functions and you set up everything, you're going to have a bunch of collections, right? So if you go into Firestore database here, you're going to be having a bunch of collections. So you're going to have this collection, you're going to have this collection, and you're also going to be having uh, for each user, you're going to be having this FCM tokens sub collection. Okay. And this way, the system will know, well, this user has these tokens, right? So this is Tom, this is James, and this is Rob. So if I go into uh, Tom, for instance, and as you can see, he has tokens. And the reason he has the tokens is because he logged out, he logged in, he, he got another token. Okay. That's one of the reasons also. Uh, Firebase messaging, this whole thing that does these push notifications, it from time to time, it refreshes tokens, right? So it's going to be fairly common for one user to have a lot of different tokens, depending on how often they use the app. Okay. And so for instance, I have, um, this user has a lot of these tokens, right? This is James here. And this user has also a bunch of these tokens. So it really depends on, you know, your usage patterns, right? And obviously some of these tokens are not valid anymore, right? Because I'm using my app, right? So you saw this, right? This isn't the token that I'm seeing now, right? This is Tom at Tom.com. So if I find Tom here and I go into my tokens, well, one of these tokens is not going to be valid anymore, right? So let me take a look. It starts with DGU. This is the token that's valid, right? So this token here from the other day, you know, it's not valid anymore, right? I'm not using this token. So if you send a notification to this token here, um, nobody's going to receive it, right? Because, you know, it's, I'm not, you know, I'm, I'm seeing this token here, right? So as far as um, Firebase messaging is concerned, Firebase um, cloud messaging, this app here that's running, it has this ID. That's how, you know, Firebase cloud messaging identifies them. Okay. And so, you know, you're going to be having lots of different tokens, but only one of them is going to be valid, right? Only one of them is going to be valid at once. All right. So we talked about this push notification function, which is actually the simplest part of the app, right? It's a very, very simple flow. Now, like I said before, if you want to display these notifications while the app is running, while the app is in the foreground, you need to do something extra because if you check out their documentation, they actually tell you that it's, you know, the notification is not going to show up if the app is in the foreground. It's only going to be, you know, it's only going to be handled by the system. It's never going to be handled by the app. And so if you want your app to handle it, and you probably do because, you know, if I'm using the app, you know, I want to, I want to see push notifications. I want to see something happen. If I'm not using the app, I also want to get notified. But if I'm using the app, I obviously want to get notified. Then you need to do something extra. And that extra is something that I did here. So if you come over here in this custom code, we have this uh, custom action called initialize messaging. Okay. And I have a bunch of things here happening. But what I want to direct your attention to is I have a bunch of these functions here. So we have things, uh, something called get initial message, but the most important thing, and this is the, the most common thing is this callback here, right? This thing is listening for messages while the app is in the foreground. And so as a result here, I, I'm basically saying received message one, just so that I know what happened. But here I'm displaying this special, um, special notification. This is using a third party library that I'm going to be showing in a second, but 
If you scroll down, we also have on message open app, right? So if you hover over, you will see uh, that is called when a user presses a notification message displayed via FCM, right? So if they get a notification, they click it, it opens the app. That's another event, right? So they're not looking at the app, but they click on the notification, then they open the app. And I am not, I'm not doing anything, right? We also have on background message. I'm not doing anything. Obviously, if you're building a production app, you probably need to kind of take care of these scenarios as well. But you know, the most common scenario is obviously going to be, you know, when the user is using the app. And so if you hover over here, you can see that returns a stream that is called an incoming FCM payload. Incoming FCM payload is essentially an incoming uh, Firebase cloud messaging notification, essentially, is received while the Flutter instance is in the foreground, right? So this is crucial. If you do not have this, um you're not gonna you, your you know your users are not gonna be seeing notifications right you need to kind of handle it now this here is a custom action but most importantly if you go into main dart i have this custom action in this final actions okay so i have this initialized messaging here as part of this final action why final action well i want to make sure that everything else in the app has already been initialized so everything has been set up so now i set up my things right because in this initialized messaging, I am using, I'm displaying this token. Okay. So I want to make sure that the token is already available, that app state is already set up because this here is a token, right? So if we load up the app, you see, this is the token here. Okay. So I want to make sure that we already have the token. Everything is good to go. Everything is ready. Uh, before I show my action, it's just a safe way of doing it, having it as a final action here. And so all of this code here that handles the different notifications and displays the dialog box is, is actually a custom action, but it gets loaded. It gets triggered as part of this main, uh, main section here as part of the main app when it's in the process of starting up, right? Because this main here, right? This is my initialized messaging, and this is where the app is actually running, okay? And so it, it's, it essentially initializes everything, it sets up everything just before the actual app runs, okay? So this is great because now everything is ready and the app can run, and the app knows what to do with all of these uh, push notifications. It knows exactly how to handle it. Now, let me show you another scenario that happens when the user first logs in, and I can show you the entire process here. And so what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna go to my UI, and I am going to add an action to log out the user, okay? And that way they're gonna be shown the login screen, and you're gonna see the whole flow. And so, and you're also gonna see the, the flow, the way I modified this app. So we're gonna come in, add a button here. I'm gonna put it just under this text. I am going to give it a little bit of padding. And I'm going to say, log out. And we're gonna have an action. I'm gonna add an action, let's say log out, okay? And so when the user clicks on it, they're gonna log out, they're gonna see the login screen again, and they're gonna get a new token. And that way you can see the whole flow. Okay, so now that we have this change, I'm gonna click here, I'm gonna copy this, I'm gonna go back to my um, terminal here, and I'm gonna paste this here. And what's that gonna do? It's gonna download this entire code here onto my computer so that I can run it in real device simulator here. In fact, I have two simulators. Now, let me quickly show you a scenario of what happens when you first run that app for the first time. So I'm gonna go into settings, I'm gonna go into apps here, and I'm gonna delete this app here. I'm gonna uninstall it, okay? And now we don't have this app on this emulator. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to run it again. Okay, it's going to install it as though we are installing it for the first time. All right, and there's the app loading for the first time because we've uninstalled it. And I'm gonna log in as a raw. And as you can see, when you run it for the very, very first time, it asks you, allow this app to send you notifications. And this is the code that Flutterflow includes in your app once you enable push notifications. We're gonna say allow, and now we're seeing this token, we can log out, we can send notifications, and you might have noticed that we have a brand new token, right? So if I go back here and I go into my uh, user storage here, we are logged in as Rob here. So if I find Rob here, and let's go ahead and find Rob, this is James, Rob, there's Rob. We should see a new token, right? So if I 
set this if I do create it by here. And as you can see, this is this new token here. Okay. So if I click here, it starts with CMT46, which is the exact token. This is a brand new token that we uh receive from the uh from the fcm system now when you're testing your app and you're not sure whether the app is sending push notifications correctly or not firebase provides a piece of functionality that allows you to test by sending these notifications right so you can simply go into messaging here and you can send a test notification essentially so you're going to click on uh, new campaign notifications and here you can fill some information hey hey there and you can click on send test message and here you need to enter your token so here we're not entering a username because you know firebase has no idea who these users are it needs a token right and so let's say we want to send it to this app instance. Well, we see the token here, CMT46. And in fact, you can find this token here as well, right? So if you come over here and you find the user uh, who we logged in as Rob, you find Rob there and you come over here and you sort these by created, created by, you find the last token, then you can click here and you can copy this token and then go back here and you can add this token. Click plus, send it. And then you can send it. Now, this essentially sends a push notification to a device registered with this token, right? Registered having this token. So we're going to say test and we should hopefully receive it here. And as you can see there, I received a test notification here. I can reply to it. I can dismiss it. I can do all kinds of interesting things. Now, using Firebase Cloud Functions is not the only way that you can set up push notifications with Flutterflow. You can also use Superbase to achieve the exact same thing. So here we have the initial flow for Superbase. And it's a very, very similar flow as you're going to be seeing in just a little bit. And here's the send notification flow for Superbase. And this is also a very, very similar flow. The main difference being that here with uh, Firebase, we are triggering a cloud function, whereas here we are triggering an edge function, which is the equivalent in the Superbase world. All right, so if you head over to Superbase documentation, you're gonna find this really, really good article here that outlines everything that you need to know when it comes to setting up Superbase in order to get it working with push notifications, okay? And so we're gonna select Firebase Cloud Messaging. We're gonna scroll down and we're gonna follow these steps. First, we're going to create the, these two tables here, this public profiles and public notifications. So I'm going to copy this, go into my Superbase instance, click on the SQL editor, and I'm going to paste this here, click run, and that should create both of these tables here. And as you can see, I should be seeing these two tables here. Next, we're going to come back here and we are going to scroll down. Now, what we need to do is we need to set up our local Superbase environment so that we can create an edge function and upload it into our account. And so what we're going to do is we're going to go into my shell here. I'm just going to make a new directory called SB, stands for Superbase, and I'm going to follow the instructions. I'm going to say Superbase in it here. I'm going to say yes. Next, I'm going to say I'm going to paste this here. The next thing that we need to do is we need to copy and paste this edge function. And so I'm going to open that directory that I've just created in Visual Studio Code here, and we're going to open up Superbase functions and we're going to click on this index.ts and you have some like a template here. We're going to select all that. We're going to paste what we had here. Okay. We're going to keep following the instructions, scroll down. And now it says that we need to generate a new service account private key from Firebase console. Okay. So if you go into your Firebase console, you can generate a new private key. Okay. So I'm going to go into my Firebase console here. I'm going to click here, project settings and service accounts, scroll down. And what you can do is you can generate a new private key. So I already did this step. We're going to go to the next step and it wants us to place this file uh, in Superbase functions directory. So we're going to find this Superbase functions here. Okay. So I went ahead and drag and drop this file. And it also wants us to rename it to service dash account json next we want to deploy this function okay so first we need to link this local superbase environment to our 
cloud, you know, super based environment. Because right now they're not linked, right? You have your dashboard where you're doing all these things, setting up tables, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But then we have this directory that kind of lives its own life. So we have to link it together. We're going to copy this super base link here and we're going to execute it. Okay. So now it's asking me which project uh, do we want to connect it to. If you do not see this, make sure you type super base space login so that you can log into your super base account. And that way you're going to see this. So let me go ahead and see which project so i have this prj2 which is this second one i'm gonna press it i'm gonna select it okay so once my database password i'm gonna go back here i'm gonna go into project settings and we're gonna go ahead and find my database password somewhere there it is i'm gonna reset the database password okay i'm gonna come back here and we're gonna type it here okay I finished super base link now let's go back it and now we can deploy it right so now we can deploy this edge function that we have here on our local machine deploy it into our superbase account right so i'm going to paste this here i'm going to enter it. it's building it and let's wait a few moments deployed function push okay so now we can see whether we actually you know have this function right i'm going to go back here and if you go into this edge function setting here this menu you can see that we have this function here a few seconds ago okay so now we have this edge function deployed okay and this edge function is going to be responsible for actually sending these uh, push notifications via the FCM network, okay? So now let's come back here, and now it wants us to navigate to that uh, database webhook settings and create a webhook, right? So we need a webhook to connect to changes in our table or any table so that any changes in the table triggers this edge function, which in turn sends a push notification okay so let's jump into our database webhook settings database we're gonna go into webhooks and we're gonna create a new webhook so i'm gonna say create a new webhook i'm gonna say push notification the table right so the table it actually tells us it wants it to be on public dot notifications with the insert event right so we're gonna come back here we're gonna find our table and we're gonna select insert type of webhook is gonna be a super base edge function I'm, and i believe all of this uh should be le uh, left as is right so yeah super base edge function and all of this should be left uh, on defaults okay and here we're gonna say create a webhook okay so now we have that final link so any change in the table triggers that edge function which in turn sends a push notification with the data that we had in our table okay so now we have this here so now it's telling us send push notification right make sure you have a user with an fcm token in the profiles table okay navigate the table editor and then in your notification table insert a new row okay so now let's go ahead and take a look at our profile table first and make sure that we have the token set up correctly okay because we need the token okay and here i'm gonna do it manually but when you're gonna be building your app you need to have that as part of your app setup remember this is done for you when it comes to using firestore right flutterflow does this but this is something you have to do manual but this is really really trivial to do so what i'm gonna do is i'm going to add a new record a new row i'm gonna select i don't know some user there and i'm gonna just give it a valid token okay well, let's say we select james and i'm gonna give it a valid token so what's a valid token well if you take a look here this is a valid token the cmt46 come back here let's go ahead and find this there it is because this is the last token right it's the last valid token and we have the app running so let's copy that again and come back here and paste it here okay so now we have a mapping the user to token or token to user mapping well it's user to token okay and last but not least we need to create a record in notifications right new notification insert a new row and now if i create a new row here it should automatically trigger the push notification because once i create a new row here that's going to trigger the webhook the webhook is going to trigger the edge function and the edge function is going to take the information here and use that in order to send the push notification okay so let's go ahead and try this this is the moment of truth here we need to pick the user that has the token which is this user here i'm gonna put hello from superbase i have my app open here and it has this token here and so we're gonna hit save i'm gonna load this up and we should get a notification
and there it is hello from superbase how cool is that and as you can see that is how you set up superbase with your app now of course it's worth saying that when you're using firebase you have a bunch of things done for you namely you have the part that's creating the initial tokens getting the tokens and creating these records and so if you want to be using superbase for your push notifications you need a way to create records in this profiles table but just like how I said earlier in the video that is very very trivial all right guys so i really hope you enjoyed this tutorial and of course there's still a lot more work to be done and the best way to kind of continue tweaking your app improving on it seeing exactly how everything was done checking out the um you know the fcm token generation looking at how i set up all of these things you know the the messages this thing the awesome notification which is this package here that you can use to create some really really powerful notification the best way to kind of continue working on all of this is by viewing and or cloning this app and you can easily do that when you join our amazing patreon community because when you become a member of our amazing patreon community not only when you join our amazing community become a member of something great but you also get access to this app as well as all the other apps that i have on this channel so if you're looking to learn from experience learn how i build some of these apps improve on you know take some of this functionality and leverage uh, in your own apps as well, whether this is an app that you're working on right now or an app that you plan on building in the future, then, you know, being able to get access to all of these apps is definitely an awesome, awesome thing. And it's going to skyrocket your no code journey as well. But that's not all. Along with all the apps, along with all of these resources, you're also going to get access to extra content such as q a's live streams behind the scenes as well as our patreon supported masterclass series where i do deep dives when it comes to various concepts apps tools etc etc and in fact a lot of people have been asking me to do a masterclass on push notifications which would be a great companion video to this tutorial in fact i probably will be doing it in the near future and so if you're interested in in checking out our masterclass series seeing all the new content getting access to all of these apps as well as supporting the channel and supporting my work then you definitely need to become a member of our amazing patreon community and you can learn more by visiting the link in the description below the video